If you want to know how to divide decimals, you're in the right place. Okay, really fast before we get started. If you need to know how to add, subtract, or multiply decimals, guess what? I've got some videos over there. Okay, I also have one video where I add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals all in one video, and I go pretty quick. I'm going to be pretty detailed in this tutorial. So click where is your best fit. I'm not sure if that was a proper sentence. Anyways, I'm a math person, not English. So let's go. Okay. 6.6 .6 divided by 1.2. This might look intimidating, but we can do it. Okay. When we have a division problem written like this, we are going to use long division. Okay. Looks a little something like this. Now, when I do long division, Did you want the song a little something like this? <laughs> guys, Alexa just heard me. Alexa, stop. Okay. <laughs> this number goes inside. Okay. So this one goes outside. Now, I don't want this number on the outside to have a decimal. Mm, it's just kind of annoying. So I can get rid of it what you say. She's not speaking truth here. I am. Okay. So let me show you what I'm going to do. And then I'll show you why I'm not a bad person for doing it. Okay. So what I'm going to do to make this not a decimal anymore, I'm going to move this decimal over to the end. And I can't just go changing things randomly, right? In division, if I change both of them, so I move this one over one as well, fair game. Okay. And I'll show you why in a minute. So if I move those, then instead I have 66 divided by 12. Okay. This number goes on the outside. This number goes on the inside, but you're like, she's lying. This isn't okay. Let me show you why it's okay. All right. 10 divided by five gives me two, right? Okay. If I don't see a decimal on a number, it's really just stuck here on the end. So if I were to move this decimal over and this decimal over and put zeros in there, I'd end up with 100 divided by 50, right? What's 100 divided by 50? Oh, it's two. So I ended up with the same answer, okay? So if I move both of them over, I'm still going to have the same answer. Now, this doesn't apply to adding, subtracting, multiplying decimals, but it does to dividing, okay? It's our best friend with dividing decimals. So now I've got 12 into 66, okay? So 12 goes into 66. Well, 12 times 5 is 60. So since I'm putting it into the 66, I put it over this 6, okay? 5 times 12 gives me 60, and I subtract and get 6. Okay, now when you first learned long division, you would have written your answer as five remainder six. But I'm guessing that now that you're dividing decimals, your teacher probably doesn't want the answer that way anymore. They probably want it written as a decimal. Okay, so from here, all we do is I'm going to put my decimal here, right? If you don't see a decimal in a number, it's just at the end. And I'm going to stick a zero on the back. Now, why can I do that? I always like to tell you why. Well, if I had $13, I could write it like that or like this, right? So putting the zeros behind the decimal doesn't change it. It just looks a little different, okay? So I'm going to now bring this zero down, okay? Now this decimal goes right up above, right there, okay? Now 12 goes into 60 five times. Five times 12 is 60. Subtract and I get zero. Okay, so my answer is 5.5. Okay, now if this hadn't ended up a zero, if it would have subtracted and still had a number down here, you just add another zero, bring that down. You can do that until you get zero. Okay, it's just a you just do it because you just love it. Okay, so you can keep adding zeros until you get there. Okay, all right, next one. Now, this one's a little different. These ones both only had one number behind the decimal. These ones have more. Um, so we'll show you how this works. Okay, again, sorry, I just like shifted my entire thing. Okay, long division. 
first number goes inside, this one goes outside. I don't want my outside number to have a decimal. Inside one, sure. Outside one, not so much. It's possible, but mm, I just don't wanna mess with it. So I'm gonna move it over once. If I move that one over, I gotta move this one over. Okay, this one goes on the outside, so 31. And on the inside, I have 394.94, okay. Now, 31 doesn't go into three, right? 31 into 39, it goes once. So since I'm putting it into 39, I write the one above the nine, okay? One times 31 gives me 31, and then I subtract, and I'm left with eight. Okay, then I bring down this four. 31 goes into 84 twice. Okay, just so you know, I've done this problem before. I'm not usually that fast. Normally I'd have like little things over here like, okay, 31 divided by three is this. I have little notes over here, okay? Well, I've done this before, so guess what? I know what they are. All right, so two times 31 gives me, hold on, 62. And then I go ahead and subtract that and I get 22, okay? Now we're to the decimal. This just goes straight up. Okay, that's why it's important to make sure you're lining these numbers up correctly so your decimal ends up in the right place, okay? Now, bring down this nine. All right, 31 goes into 229 seven times, okay? Because seven times 31 gives me 217. And then when I subtract that, I get two and one, so 12. Now I'm going to bring this four down. 31 goes into 124, four times. Four times 31 gives me 124. And I'm left with zero. Awesome. Okay, again, if this had not ended up being zero, I can just add a zero on here and keep going. Okay, so my answer is 12.7. Four. Yes. All right. Now I got this guy over here. What color should we use? We're going to use green. Okay. Long division. This guy goes inside. This guy goes outside. I don't want this to be a decimal if I can help it. So I'm going to move it over one, two, three times. Okay. This one as well. One, two, three. I'm going to, right at the end, I'm going to show you an example of if you run out of numbers over here, what the heck to do with that. Okay. So stick around for that. Okay. So I moved them both over three. So I end up with, it's zero, four, six, but I can drop the zero, right? So it's 46. Okay. Then this one is one, three, four, seven point eight. Remember, as long as I move both of them, we're good. Okay. 46 does not go into 1, right? It doesn't go into 13. It goes into 134 twice. So make sure I write that 2 over the 4 because we're putting it into 134. Okay. 2 times 46 gives me 92. Okay. And when I subtract that, I get 42. Okay. Bring down that seven. 46 goes into 427 nine times. Nine times 46 gives me 414. Again, if I had not done this one before, I would not do it that fast. I'd have little notes over here. All right. And when I subtract that, I get 13. All right, now this decimal goes right there, right above itself, and bring down this eight. Okay, 46 goes into 138 three times. Three times 46 gives me 138. Woohoo! Okay, so my answer is 29.3. All right, I said it with the other problems, but if this hadn't been zero, I could just add a zero on here and bring it down as many times as I needed to. Okay. All right. 
Now, what if you have a problem such as this? Okay. To get this one not to be a decimal, I'm going to have to move it over one, two, three, four times, right? So this one, one, oh crap, what do I do now? Well, you still move it over four times, one, two, three, four. And those blank spots you just fill with zeros, okay? Dun, 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 dun. That's your answer. Thank goodness we don't have to solve that one because that one looks like it sucks, okay? All right. Hopefully this made sense. And get your homework done and feel confident about it and maybe have a little cookie or something before bed and then go to bed and have dreams of math that aren't nightmares.